This recording is aimed at helping to shape the conversation on reports and reporting from the perspective of FP&A, and in particular to help shape a discussion with clients and prospects as to the ways in which FP&A can streamline and add value to financial reporting based on leveraging out-of-the-box elements of the IFP. You know, organizations need regular, standard, consistent reports to track performance. And these are often grouped into report books, such as the management accounts. And the difficulties experienced in using Excel to produce these packs is often part of the conversation driving the discussions around FP&A. However, often the reality is that clients revert to replicating the existing packs rather than gaining the full benefit of online reporting and analytics. So I'm going to focus on this from three perspectives formal reporting, report distribution, and dashboards. Now, from the formal reporting perspective, we're looking at a completely standard out-of-the-box IFP report. You know, we can compare across different periods as we move through the year, through our business structures, actual prior year, plan, etc. And it's not difficult for us to reconfigure these reports into actual budget forecast or whatever combinations might be appropriate. And this is very much a core part of a lot of financial reporting. But also bear in mind that when we're looking at detailed data within here, if we get to a base level, you can always switch on the drill. And a drill is a key part drilling back to transactions in you know, whether it's financials or whether it's in ERP is a significant value add with respect to clients being able to quickly unearth issues in the numbers. But this is very much a finance report for finance people, but it can be the springboard for you to take that report and develop it into something much more accessible to more users. The example I want to talk to here is the Profit and Loss Exceptions Report. This is based on the, the standard Profit and Loss Deviations Report we've just been looking at. But now we put a visualization with a waterfall on the right hand side. Again, we can synchronize the choice of periods, etc., and the versions that we want to compare. Again, using drill as necessary. But now non-financial users may be able to spot particular issues. But you can turn it into more than this with guided analysis, whereby if there's a lot of numbers on this screen, maybe you want to give people the ability to focus on where are the biggest variances. So here we have the example we could type in a percentage number, and that's highlighting if we couldn't spot the 55% being an issue, then we can color code. And we could nudge these numbers up and down if necessary in, in order to take a kind of heat map approach to this. So again, this is something that could be built quickly from existing materials, adapted and given the client's version combinations and their dimensions, very quickly we become able to present this information to financial and non-financial users. Having highlighted a number here, we can activate hot links, which can then help us navigate and drill into the, the issue. So again, this example is set up with this one particular variance. Notice we're at total cost centers at the moment. This hot links us to another report. Now this report could be just a dashboard, and we'll talk more about dashboards later, as I said. But now our 533K, which was showing a 55% adverse variance, is now a 75% adverse variance. It's all on cost set to one. So again, follow the trail. And this can take us down to what in this example is the bottom level of detail. And here, we've actually now taken that operating expenses, that 465K for the current period actuals. We're going down at nominal code level. We're actually at the bottom level of cost center, et cetera. So now a leaf level. And again, if we can't spot where the issue is, we can use that similar method of, so 
heat map tolerances, and that throws up. We've got significant number here on the 364. And with this item here, again, this could trigger the decision to investigate further from a self-service perspective. Click, and this draws us straight into ERP, and we can see the transactions that make up that 364K. So we see at the top here, in actual fact, using the toggling to sort the sending or descending, the biggest item is a 215,000 flood repair. At any stage, we can add additional items, additional information just by a simple tick box, because now we're in a workspace in ERP. So this report is completely configurable. But again, we can drill right down to the very detailed level at the bottom of that transaction. You can see all the information we have on that, right down to being able to see the invoice itself, the scanned invoice. So complete visibility right the way through. So that's taking formal reporting and leveraging it and turning it into something much more useful and accessible to a wider range of people, reducing the burden on finance and at the same time getting people more involved with their own numbers. Another aspect of reporting is the management accounts or any regular management report pack. Now, this is typically based on spreadsheets that require continual maintenance, reconciliation and distribution. Let's look at this example here where we've taken that PL exceptions report that we were looking at earlier and we've added a rich text commentary box. We can now collect formatted stakeholder commentary across the business structures at both base level and summary levels. The commentary is just data within the application defined by whatever version, cost center, and other structures we have within the business. And this is easily configured to client requirements so that you can track commentary just as you track the numbers whilst involving all relevant stakeholders. Having collected all the necessary information across the cost centers, etc., we can leverage the report distribution to put it all together into an email that gets triggered at the end of the process. In the example here, an automated email, we just double click on the attachment and there's my financial report. So I've now got my management accounts in the form of an email. And all my commentaries collected there. But we don't have to distribute the reports. We could, you could consider triggering an automated email to deliver a link which takes us to the report online where the users can interact with the data. So there's maybe no longer a need to distribute the reports at all. They're available online for current and historical data. They show the current structures always up to date, and they deliver consistent self-service interactive reporting. So we have a mechanism whereby all those time consuming processes of producing formal printed reports and sending them out to individuals may become unnecessary or significantly reduced. So that covers my discussion on key aspects of formal reporting and report distribution, but an area that we haven't really explored yet is dashboarding. And this can tie in very closely with standard reports whilst providing a secure analytical interface for users to gain additional insights to their data. And to illustrate that, we're going to look at a planning or what if cycle around a story where we're working with flexing some data around requirements for agency resources to fulfill gaps in our internal resources. An example here, we've got some drivers around whether a contract is live, the contracted hourly rate, the contractual hours available, and a quality ranking of whether these are tier one, two, three, four, etc. I'm using this example just to tell a story around how we might allocate work across a portfolio of suppliers depending on price and quality standards. And we may flex some of this data to simulate losing a supplier or changes in rate cards, etc. And this particular example has been configured to prioritize the best quality and price by region. So if we review our variables, we can make changes here as appropriate. And we would see this maybe by our various regions, versions, 
I'm going to focus on base case and version one for these purposes. We see how the data varies across the different versions. So having reviewed our data here and made various changes, and now we want to see the impact of those different variables on the outcome. So first of all, let's look at how we might vary the allocation. So here we're looking at the plan, Northwest region, version one. Now from another part of the application, we can feed the, the data for the excess hours, the shortfall between what we can deliver and the demand here. I could type in a number, for example, say maybe we think that's 895, for example. And that means we need to cover an additional 45 from what we have here. I'll run the allocation. That uses the internal prioritization to allocate those required hours. If I look at that from the base case perspective, put the same numbers in, run the allocation there. So we have 45,900 across the Northwest being the agency cost there in the base case and in version one, that goes up to 52,000. We can see that summarized by tier one, two, three, et cetera. So we have sufficient to cover that, but what are the drivers? What's the impact overall? And we can rapidly link into moving from a, a detailed report or a, an input sheet into the analytical environment. So here we have a dashboard. It has a number of widgets and what we can see here is different regional impacts, east of England. We can link these combinations together and see the context changing across the other parts of the dashboard. So each of these visualizations is what we call a widget, and we can explore them in various ways. Here I'm looking at my plan. I've got various other combinations of historical data I can look at when we were looking at version one and we had base case. I can across the different tiers. Tier one, two, three. And across all agencies or potentially individuals. So all of this is drillable, sliceable data. However, an end user isn't restricted to just viewing the data from this perspective. They can very quickly and easily hover over a widget and now choose to look at this in analysis mode. Just one click. I'm now looking at that individual widget and maybe I want to look at just the hourly rate and the planned hours. And Again, from this perspective, I may wish to look at it from multiple combinations. So on our, if you like, our page setting here, I can choose the various regions, but there's nothing to stop me saying on an ad hoc basis, I want to join various regions together in an aggregation, click OK, and there's my analysis straight away. Really simple and easy to use. And perhaps I want to see this also from a completely different perspective. I want to see a grid of numbers. Simple click. Here I can choose the different visualizations that are appropriate to my perspective. So rather than taking this data out to a spreadsheet, I can just look at this and slice and dice and I have this pivot table environment. And again, within this combination, I can quickly and easily drag and drop. And I can now see tier one, two, three and a total. I could bring different combinations on screen and combine them together. So I've got hourly rate available hours by tiers. And I can pivot, slice, dice, export to a spreadsheet and do further analysis. So the dashboarding gives the ability to add further value to that reporting process, linking in coming straight from formal reports and planning processes or standard monthly reports, link into a dashboard. You've got the drill, the slice, the dice. 
doing a lot of those things that a lot of organizations are doing directly within spreadsheets. But here you can reduce that export reconciliation process within spreadsheets by doing a lot of those tasks within the application direct. So think about you know, encouraging a, a strategy to adopt self-service reporting so that users can be easily guided to issues and then drilled to underlying detail without having to ask people to produce additional analysis. And demonstrate the financial reporting about the numbers and the supporting commentary, which can then manage your data within fp and And help clients and stakeholders understand the difference between reporting and analytics via the dashboard, in particular, the immediate analysis of scenarios in a full slice and dice and drill environment. So that concludes this short presentation. I hope it's been of use and uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>